We're going to begin with our call to worship. In those days before the final coming of Christ in glory, there will be mighty signs. They will remind us of God's eternal presence and power. Therefore, let our hearts be glad and our souls rejoice. God has reached out to all God's people with compassion and tenderness. Amen. So as we enter into Advent, a time of waiting and waiting for Christ, our first hymn focuses on the presence of God and the holiness of God. So as we call on this light of Christ to come as well, let's share the song together. It's up to you. She's 
are in the person's t-shirts. <laughs> This might be a test for everybody. Does anyone else know what the word Advent means? Any shaking their head? Surely after all these years of uh, experience and wealth of knowledge, there should be a knowledge of what this, what this means. It means come, or the coming of. So we are excited to be looking forward to the coming of Jesus and Christmas. What else are we excited for? How many days have we got left? We're down to 15 days. We're counting down the days of our holiday to so the first thing that we have to do for anything that we're getting ready for is to be prepared. And we spoke about that in the last couple of weeks with our gospel readings about being prepared for the coming of God. And this Sunday we're talking about getting ready and paying attention. So how do we pay attention? God is coming in a new way. And in the Bible it says about God coming in the form of Jesus Christ as a baby. And so one of the wonderful things about the coming of Christ is that it gives us joy in our hearts and hope for the future. And I was just going to get you and all the other kids, it's been a very helpful uh, explanation of that. By coming and standing just there, all you've got to do is smile. That's all you have to do. So come stand on the step there. And when he's, when he's a big child, there we go, thanks for Now all you have to do, after the three, when I count to three, I just need you to give your biggest, goofiest, teethiest smile. A happy one, not so good. Okay, so three, two, one, go. <laughs> so what was the what was the response here? What was the what happened? When you did your smile, a bit of a grimace maybe, I don't know. But what, what happened around with all, with all everybody else? What happened with their faces? They smiled as well. So when we show hope and light and Jesus' is light in our lives, and what I was going to get you to is light the Christ candle for us. So what we do when we light the Christ candle, we're aware that Christ is in our, in our midst. Christ is with us and gives us hope for the future. And today's Advent is the Advent of hope outside our service this week. So if you'd like to light the Christ candle there in the middle, and come there, don't you? That's it. She might need help. It's a push along. Push it forward, yeah. So when sometimes in life we have to give our hope through our, through our smiles, through our engagement with others, and oftentimes that means something special, doesn't it? When we smile, share that warmth of God in our lives with others, others might feel a sense of warmth in their lives, a sense of hope for tomorrow. Norm, I'm going to invite you to come and share with you and my love first step. Today is the first Sunday of Sunday in which we recall the hope we have in Christ. The prophets of Israel all spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a saviour would be born, a king in the line of David. They spoke of how he would rule the world wisely and bless all nations. On Christmas Day, the Christ of our hope was born. On Good Friday, the Christ of our hope died. On Easter Day, the Christ of our hope rose from the dead. He then ascended into heaven. On the last day, the Christ of our hope will come again to establish his kingdom over all things on earth. As followers of Christ, we await his return. We light this candle to remember that as he came to us humbly in the manger at Bethlehem and gave light to the world, so he is coming again in power to deliver his people. We light this candle to remind us to be alert and to watch for his return. Now I've got to try it out again. <laughs> Let us pray. Loving God, we 
thank you for the life you give us. Help us prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming. Bless our worship. Help us to live holy and righteous lives. We ask it in the name of the one, born and death. as we continue in our sun worship. Our next hymn is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. A hymn of longing for hope and the longing for the coming of Christ to come and live in our lives. Let us join together as we sing. Father God, we are so grateful for the love that you give to us, your gift of hope for this world. Lord, we pray that you will use these gifts that have been so generously given for your kingdom, for the extension of your hope in this world. Lord, bless us and use us for your service. Amen. We move into our time of uh, scripture readings, and may I invite you to come and read the scripture for us. Today's reading is from Luke 
next reading comes from Mark chapter 33, verses 24 to 37. The coming of the Son of Man. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds, with great power and glory. Then he will send out his angels, and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. The lesson of the fig tree. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The necessity for watchfulness. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you too, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he suddenly comes. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. It's a bit of a funny lectern, so the mask at the top of my head is quite a bit because it's very low, and so I apologise for that. I'll learn how to use it as we go along. Well, happy new year. I'm not going mad. I'm not pushing the time away. I know I won't be here in a few weeks. I'll be in England for the start of 2024, but rather because the Christian year begins here at Advent season, and this way of beginning itself is significant. You might think the year would begin with the trumpets of Easter, or the softness of Christmas Eve, or the fires of Pentecost, but rather, instead, we begin with the shadows, we begin in despair, we begin with sorrow, war, and hate. Which, when we look around the world, we might think that this scripture has been written for us here today. There's a bit of a challenge going on in our world, isn't there? It's precisely there, in the mire of life, that the God of grace will arrive, and accordingly, it's precisely there that God's church is called to be present and active, lighting candles of hope, candles of peace, candles of joy, and candles of love against those shadows and those moments. It's worth remembering the deep poetry. As, a, as the, Christian, uh, the Christian New Year begins, we enter the darkness, a season of waiting, a season of singing, and a season of praying in the new for the light of Christ to come. This week is also about the beginning of Year B, in a revised common lecture, you hear walking through the Gospel of Mark together. Mark is a crisp and crackling action packed version of Jesus' ministry. Likely written during the time or after just after the disastrous Jewish revolt against the Roman imperial occupation of Palestine in 66 and 70 CE. Rome's vengeance shattered and shook Mark's world to the very core, right in that moment. The imperial armies vanquished the rebellion, destroyed the Jewish temple, desecrating what for the Jews was nothing less than the sacred heart of their world and their lives. And as a result, the message of Mark's gospel is indeed a message of hope proclaimed in the midst of a catastrophe. 
So really here, it's, we have to listen from this position of desolation, chaos, and bewilderment. We have to listen alongside the traumatized soldier, alongside the displaced refugee, alongside the heartbroken addict, alongside the exhausted nurse, the mourning spouse, the homeless single mum living in her car. This is where Mark lives. These are the depths from which he proclaims the good news of the risen Christ in our world. When death did in powers and forces seem to have the upper hand in this world, one ancient response was to envision an imminent future in which God directly comes to rescue in a spectacular way, in a spectacular fashion. Writing wrongs, rorting wrongdoers, and thereby inaugurating a new era of justice and compassion. This literature is often called the apocalyptic literature from the Greek word apocalypus, or apocalypsis, <coughs> meaning the uncovering or the revealing. God pulls aside the veil, revealing to us the hidden dramatic rescue which is to come for all. Apocalyptic narratives and images are all the way through the Bible, with Daniel and Revelation being the most common prime examples, typically including cryptic and poetic lessons, different language with ominous signs in the heavens, falling stars, natural disasters, anguish followed by victory. In essence, these are extravagant, evocative visions of hope when all hope seems to have been lost. This passage is at the tail end of Mark 13, a chapter sometimes called Mark's, a uh, uh, Mark and the Apocalypse. It's Jesus' final teachings to his disciples before the passion overtakes him, and in a sense is a kind of farewell discourse for those. The temple will be destroyed and desecrated, Jesus says. A time of great suffering is to follow, but then, and here Jesus is clearly intentionally echoing the ancient voices of Daniel and Isaiah, Ezekiel and Amos when he says, new signs will appear and the child of humanity will arrive and make everything right. But since we don't know exactly when the child of humanity will come, not even Jesus knows this, which is strange but true, we have to stay mindful. We have to stay alert so that we will be ready. We must keep awake, the verse tells us. Reading this stunning and challenging passage during Advent, we may well think of Mary's magnificence in Luke 1, her son responding to Gabriel's astonishing good news for her. In its own way, the song is a hymn of praise to Apocalypse for revealing how God is turning everything upside down, turning things in on themselves, lifting up the lowly and bringing the mighty down from their thrones. But make no mistake, God's revolution runs deeper than this military victory that they so desired back in the day. This will be a revolution of love, a revolution of justice, a revolution of hope and care, a revolution of spirit and flesh, a revelation of good news, of great joy for all people. As we enter the season of Advent, this is the perfect time to name what Advent is all about, entering into the shadows of despair, war, sorrow, and hate, actively waiting for Jesus to come, lighting candles of hope and peace and joy and love. Likewise, to really hear what Mark is saying, we first need to enter into the shadows, into those places that we don't necessarily want to go, where all hope seems to have been lost. Roman armies desecrated and destroyed the temple, ruining the sacred heart of the world, not just in the first century Palestine, but for all people, people here and now. And in a time of sickness and wars and seemingly daily news of disasters and the cost of living and housing crisis, people are already in the shadows of suffering in our world, suffering with anxiety and exhaustion and grief and pain. The key message of the Advent of Christmas is that such shadows are precisely the place where Jesus is calling us to. It's the exactly the place where Jesus has come 
and where the church is called to go. Once we have entered into those shadows, both intellectually and emotionally, from there we can proclaim the good news, the hope that rings out when all hope seems to be lost. The essence of the apocalypse, the point of what is being revealed, is that God is on the way. Accordingly, all of us should be watchful and alert. We must keep awake over the days and weeks ahead, cultivating a mindfulness and attentiveness to the signs of hope and wonder all around us. We must keep awake, for Christ is on the way. Shall we pray? Lord God, as we continue to wait on you, as we continue to seek after your way in our lives, Lord, help us to live lives of hope. Help us to keep awake in the knowledge that you are on your way. Lord, show us who you are in those places where we might not want to be. Lord, show us who we can be to those people who need your love in this time. Lord, bless us and use us. Help us to be your people. Help us to shine the lights of hope in this world. Amen. As we continue to worship together and we reflect on how we must stay awake for the advent of Christ, our next song helps us to reflect on the goodness of God in every aspect of our lives. Once again, it's a new song to you, or to many. Those of you who know it, sing loudly. I would invite you to remain seated and we'll sing this. It's a verse and a chorus, and a verse and a chorus, so it's not too late. Let's join together. For the church around the world, 
like Christian communities everywhere, welcome the new year of grace, good joy, and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For all people, especially for all who have experienced loss and disappointment or difficulties in the course of this year, may this season of Advent offer them healing and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For the people living with disabilities, May they experience progress in their recognition of both their needs and of their gifts. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For students and teachers who have ended their school year, that the coming holidays may be a time of new vision, renewal and refreshment. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. For all those who volunteer within our congregation and the wider community, we celebrate them. Lord, we thank them for their hearts of service and for sharing them with your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. God of love and mercy, you never cease to bless us with grace and mercy. Bring us to the fullness of life in Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever. Amen. As we continue in our worship this morning, uh, we are moving into our time of communion. Share this feast with. 
We pray for all those who are in sorrow and in pain, all who are ill and alone. Your song of wisdom rang out before the world began. Throughout the ages, your song of liberation has filled us with your hope for the world where, the con where those considered last and least will be the first and the most. We pray for our church and all the many ministries, for the nations that they strive for peace and justice and for an end to violence and the coming of peace and hope in your world. And so, with all the people on earth and the company of the heavens, we praise your name and join in the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven and heart, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. God of hope, make this bread the means of our building. This wine, the medium of our transgressions, and this table, the foundation of our renewal, and in this community, the place of rebirth. Amen. At this time, we remember Jesus, who on the night before he died, he took a loaf of bread and he broke it. And he said, take this and eat. This is my body, which I have given for you. Whenever you do this, do so in remembrance of me. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup. This is the cup of my new covenant, poured out for you and for the many in forgiveness. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifices in union with Christ's offering, for us, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. And so, gracious God, breathe breath of peace, source of life. We pray for your spirits. Make us well many one. Make us though broken whole. Make us, despite the death, alive. And so we pray. The prayer that the Lord has taught us. Our Father, Amen. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord, and the power of God forever. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of life. The cup of Christ, the cup of blessing. Let us eat and drink together, for the table is open for all. <coughs>
and now go from this place blessed to be bowled over by hope and shoved out of the complacency to watch and wait and join in the work of the bringing of God's dream for all creation to life. Go in peace, to love and to serve the Lord. Amen.